Hey, what's up, everybody? So there's been a lot of talk about um, military service lately, and I'm not going to get into the politics about all that because, you know, gross. But um, I do have this thing. What this is, this is a puzzle box that I bought in 2004 in Mosul, like right before um, we went back to Germany during my first uh, deployment there. So, uh, and what I keep in it, I've disabled the puzzleness of this box because at some point I forgot how to open it. And, um, so when I figured out how to open it, I just like, somehow I like took out a, like the lock mechanism. And so now it just opens. And what I keep inside here is, I don't know if you can see all that, but this is like all the stuff, all the mementos I kept from my 10 years on active duty and two years in the reserves before that as a high school kid and we'll we'll go through this and see if there's anything interesting see if i can remember pretty much any of it yeah there's a lot of crap in here okay so this thing is completely empty now <laughs> I guess we'll start with the unit crests, and that'll just give you a good timeline of what I did when I did it. All the different units that I was a part of, minus the basic training and AIT units, which I'll just consider as part of this. I don't know if you can see it. This is the uh, unit crest for the 172nd Medical Logistics Battalion uh, here in Ogden. Um, this was my first reserve unit. I joined when I was in high school in 1998. That was my first army experience. Went to basic training in AIT, and I went I went to basic training at uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, in the summer of 98. After my junior year, then after I graduated high school, I went to AIT at Fort Sam Houston to medical logistics school. I've dedicated all this time to being in the army. Why not go? Why not go? Uh, regular army so i went to the recruiter i said hey let's let's go full time the reserve unit didn't like that because they just spent all this money to uh train me and have me and they uh they didn't like releasing me from my contract but you know uh, uh, i found out later when i was a recruiter that there were some arms twisted because i was going to be the rec allegedly i was going to be the recruit that got them got roy station their um their regular army quota for that year <laughs> the thing was i had to wait six months that was the deal that was the deal it's like he's got to stay in the 172nd for six months and then we'll release him to go active duty so when i finally went active duty it was january of 2000 uh and uh this is the unit crest for the 10th combat support hospital which i was in in 2000 and 2001 uh, it was my first duty station, and uh, boy, oh boy, uh, was that an interesting time. I, uh, I think I have a lot of really fond memories about the 10th Cache, and the interesting thing about 10th Cache, my experience in 10th Cache anyway, is that there's a, a stark division, because 9-11 happened, about army life before 9-11 and army life after 9-11, because it was crazy different as you can probably imagine now i told you before i went on to uh recruiting duty um i volunteered to become a corporal recruiter which is a program that lets i i think about this and i i i, I still can't believe that they let me do this as a young soldier they gave me a lateral promotion to corporal from specialist to corporal and they sent me to recruiter to recruiter school at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And uh, you're basically a field recruiter, but you're but the the idea was was that younger kids are able to younger soldiers, I guess I should say, are able to talk to some of the younger kids, like you know, like on their level, and convince them to join the army. Turns out that the 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 program didn't last. Too many corporals were getting in trouble. Turns out when you send. Uh, 21 year olds into high schools uh they're gonna get in trouble and uh i'll just leave it at that i never engaged in that behavior with high school students but a lot of corporals did and so they uh 
that program no longer exists. But this is the Unicrest. This is the, the Usarec Unicrest uh, for when I was a recruiter. So that I was I was in this unit. I was out at the Provo Army Recruiting Station in to, from just basically for the year 2002. And this is uh, I actually had to extend because I'd signed up for a three-year enlistment on my first enlistment. I had to extend that to four because they didn't want corporals ETSing out of the army as a recruiter. I don't know why. Um, but uh, you had to extend, and uh, I was um, I had to go back and so you have you have to go back and serve a year after your recruiting year is over. So I was reassigned back to Fort Carson after. Uh, my recruiting year, and I was assigned to the uh, Fort Carson Dentac, and this is, I think this is, I think this is exclusively the Dentac unit crest. I don't think this is the Medac unit crest. I think this is Dentac. So I do believe this is, I do believe this is Dentac exclusive. Could be wrong about that, but that's, that's what I believe. And I was there for 2003, and I thought that I was going to get out after that, you know, working in this dentist's office, and I was like, well, you just spent a year recruiting people into the army, and now we're at a war, and if you don't go to the war, well, what kind of, what kind of person are you? Uh, so I re-enlisted out of the Dentac at Fort Carson, and I was reassigned to Germany as part of the 226 Medlog, and this is the unit that I've deployed to Iraq from. I was there from 2004 until 2006 through 2006 so january 2004 through december 2006 so three years and this is the uh unit crest for the 226 medlock i re-enlisted again for the final time and when we came back from iraq i was reassigned to the united states army medical oh my gosh i was reassigned to the united states army medical research institute for chemical defense mricd and this is the unit crest I wore there from 2007 until May 2010 when I finally ETSed. So, 172nd Medlog, 10th Cash, uh, Userec, Fort Carson Dentac, 226 Medlog, MRICD. I didn't keep my Class A uniform. I threw it away. I got out thinking that I was never going to wear it again. And, you know, that, that's true. But now I kind of wish that I hadn't. Uh, I, could probably just, I could probably get another one if I really wanted to. These are the insignia that I wore on the Class A's to signify that I was a member of the uh, of the medical branch. This is the Caduce, right? And uh, this, of course, is the other side, uh, you know, U.S. Army, so you just wear, or wear, or wear them like that. So, I, I don't know. Who knows? This is something else that's associated with the medical corps that you have to wear on your Class A's. And this is something that I got in recruiting. This is a tie tack that I wore on my on my tie. You know, there's the new Army of One uh, campaign that they were just starting there in 2002. So they gave us these and they made us wear them on our ties. So, guys, it's been a long time. I don't know what a lot of these are anymore. I know this is the basic training medal right here, the rainbow one. Um, I think these are some overseas ribbons. Uh, this is the Iraq campaign. This is OIF, obviously. Um, I think this is Archon because I have the most right there. Pretty sure this is good conduct. Although I'm not sure this is the right apparatus for this. I don't think so, and I'm, I'm, I'm not... In fact, I'm pretty sure that it's wrong. Um, who knows? Um, but uh, these are all the Archons I got, and I think... No, this is AAMs, because I got a ton of AAMs. This is AAMs. I got a ton of AAMs. Um... That's Arcom, I think. I don't remember. Um, but if it is, then that's silly because I had more than one Arcom. I know that. I think I had three. So those are my medals, if anybody cares. Uh, this apparatus here is probably incorrect. Um, I'm not really sure why. It just doesn't look it just doesn't look right to me. That's why I think that. These are my dog tags. Um, I'm not gonna do it up close though. See you people needing need to see my uh, social security number. Just pretty sure this is a name tag that I got at Fort Leonard Wood, the very first. Um, might have. I don't ever remember ordering new ones of these. This is pretty beat up, so I think the other one that was nicer is probably the one that was actually on my class A's, and probably the one that I threw away with it. So. There's that. Pretty sure this is the name tape that was on my uh, IBA 
uh, the civilians would uh, refer to that as a bulletproof vest in Iraq. And this is a name tape that was on uh, my DCUs for Iraq. This is the unit patch. I didn't keep a bunch of unit patches from like recruiting and but this is the only unit patch that I kept and this is and this is the unit patch for 226 and the reason I think the reason I kept this one was because I earned two different combat patches one was one has actually airborne on it even though I wasn't airborne I, uh, when we were deployed to Iraq the first time we were a part of an airborne uh, battalion something like that so we were authorized to wear a uh, combat patch that had the airborne tag on it and if you don't know any better people go oh you're airborne um this was the combat patch that i wore that we earned the second time and it was because we actually deployed with our actual parent unit um so this was the combat patch that i wore because i was more proud of this one than i was of the um, airborne tag um and I just kind of felt like, you know, that airborne thing, people, it, it would, I, I think it would kind of give people the wrong idea uh, that I was something that I wasn't. So then I was more proud of this. So this is what I wore um, after leaving 226. More, more class A stuff. These are my two recruiter badges. This is the silver recruiter badge. This is the gold recruiter badge. This is the, this is the recruiting badge you get uh, when you complete recruiter school and it says like, Hey, I'm an actual certified recruiter. The gold badge is what you get after you have, um, gotten a ton of recruiter points and you've earned the gold badge. And, um, I didn't even know that I had earned, I wore the silver badge. I wore just the plain silver badge for years because I didn't know that I had actually earned the gold recruiter badge until I was informed, uh, that I had. And that was the reason why I kept getting, um, when I was stationed at MRACD, I got called back to recruiting, uh, at, not at least, twice. And I was like, why am I getting called back? And it's because you earned a gold badge. And I was like, I did? It's like, yeah, we have it on record here. Is that, yeah. And I found out that, um, they added a bunch of station points, um, at the end of, at the end of the year, at the end of my recruiting year. And I didn't know that. And I had actually technically been awarded the gold badge, but no one ever told me. So I uh, started wearing that. These are my business cards from recruiting, and I, I, I have two different versions, and I'll tell you why. This is, this is yellow. I think these, this is the first, the first ones that I use. This has an address and an email address that doesn't exist anymore, so you can go ahead and uh, this recruiting station is, like even the building that it's a part of down in Provo, is gone. It's completely gone. So, uh, so aside from being gold, this one says Corporal Joseph D. Chabuk on it, which is, believe it or not, my first name is Joseph. A lot of people might not know that. I go by my middle name. This is something that my parents decided when I was a baby. I wasn't consulted. It was it happened on the day of my birth. And this one says Corporal J. David Chadwick. Uh, I think I had a bunch of these. They had a bunch of these printed off, and they say they said Joseph on them, and I was like, ooh, gross, no. So I had to pay for new business cards that said J. David Chadwick on it, so I wasn't constantly, you know, reminding my recruits and people I gave my business cards to. They're like, hey, Joseph! And I'm like, mm, no. And those are the two different business cards. This is, uh, my, uh, my last duty station is the Chemical Research Institute. Was technically a secure location, and you had to have clearance to, to work there and go back and see like what was going on there and uh this was my pass like you know you know we had to wear it like right there and you know hold it against the um the security um badge terminal to enter the building so this was what i had look at my stupid haircut it says joseph chadwick on it uh usa mricd joseph chadwick uh i think that picture was taken in 2007 because i'm not yeah, I think I just barely got there from, yeah. Yeah, that's how you get smarted into ICD right there. So these are all, like, these are coins, challenge coins, that people give you for, uh, like, your commander or whoever. 
we'll give you if you um, are like extra special or or something. We're gonna go through all these, see if I can remember what each of these are for. So this is from this is from recruiting. This is the Userek uh, unit coin. I think you just get that just for showing up for work. This is the uh, Alpha Company coin. I think from two thousand six from OIF four. So yeah, I don't remember what I got that for. This is from ICD. It's from MRICD. And it's from Colonel Adams. Who went on to become a general. Again, I don't remember why I got that. Oh, this is from this multinational corps from Iraq in 2004. I think we all got one of these just for being in theater. Guys, I can already tell I'm not going to remember what all these are for. <laughs> what the hell is this? Oh, no, this is, yeah, this is 226. Uh, 226 log rear. I wasn't in the rear. Uh, this is from, this is a 226. This is from 2004. This was, we got these uh, when we were, when we got back from Iraq. Okay, this is from, this is from ICD. This is something from 10th Cash. I think this is probably... Um... Oh, no, wait. This is from... I finished... Uh, 10th Cash that year hosted uh, the Emergency Field Medic Badge. And uh, we did a lot of training for it. And we... I think it was like in March of 2001. We um, did a full dress rehearsal for the Expert Field Medic Badge. And part of the Expert Field Medic Badge... To get it, you have to complete a 12-mile ruck march. And uh, there was a lot of uh, talk within the unit, within 10th Cash, about who was going to win the 12-mile 12 mi 12 uh, ruck march that day, on the last day of the dress rehearsal. And um, I hadn't trained for it at all. They just made us go out there because they needed people to... Um, be part of the dress rehearsal and, you know, uh, try to get, I, I didn't earn the, the field, the expert field medic badge. I was just, I was just part of the, the dress rehearsal, but th there was a lot of talk in the unit about who was going to win the 12 mile ruck march. And all the people who were in contention for it were the, were the combat medics, like, like the, the quote unquote hard guys. Um, and, uh, I, didn't start, I did not wake up that morning thinking that I was going to win the 12 mile ruck march. But I did. And it was a big deal. Um, so, uh, that's actually one of my favorite memories from the army. Is, uh, is coming out of nowhere and beating all of these combat medics. Me, just skinny old Chadwick, uh, Medical logistics clerk, medlog guy, Juliet, coming out of nowhere and uh, winning the 12 mile rock march, just blowing everybody away. Uh, and that's what this is for, so this one's pretty special. This is from ICD. This is, this is from the commander. This is the last coin that I got on active duty. And it kind of pisses me off, and I'll tell you why. The guy that gave it to me made a little joke. I don't even know how to say this, but um, ICD had a lot of gatherings, had a lot of like mandatory get together, and let's get up and recognize these people. And in the, the like in the month that I was I was leaving, uh, leaving the army, I had been recognized, you know. Uh, Chadwick's leaving the army, everybody say goodbye to him. And we had another one where it was like an awards thing, and I hadn't gotten this thing. And the commander calls me up. Dude, the commander said, made a joke about it, and he said, you know, I really love saying goodbye to Chadwick here. And everybody laughed. And I was just like, what the hell? Uh, asshole. Um, I really shouldn't be too hard on that guy, because he did specifically... Um, and it was a harmless joke, but at the time I was just like, whatever, dude. But uh, he did say that he pulled out a, a coin specifically that was labeled 114, and that was for 
that represents each month that I had spent on active duty. So, it was kind of a backhanded compliment. But at the same time, you know, like, yeah, he didn't have to do that. So, I'm just a little so yeah, it's still a little salty thinking about that, but it was a nice thought. Well, this is from Fort Carson. So this is okay. So forty third. So this has to be tenth cash. Um. Again, don't remember. This is a Dentac coin. So it's got to be two thousand three Fort Carson. The last one. Now I I remember this. Uh, this was from two thousand four. Uh, when I was stationed at the uh, when I was stationed in Mosul as part of the forward support team in Mosul and one of the commanders from a unit we supported came to our warehouse and gave us all these coins because I guess they really liked that we uh, they really appreciated how we supported them this is a weird one I actually got this from an from A guy who, a Navy SEAL, who was not even an Uber rider of mine, but was an Uber driver, not an Uber rider of mine, but an Uber driver of my brother's, and um, he just told him, like, oh, they started talking about, like, the military, and he told him that, uh, you know, my brother served, and... He was this, he's like, well, I'm a Navy SEAL, I'm also, he's a freaking chief warrant officer, so, so he's a fairly big deal. He's like, give this to your brother and tell him he's a badass. And I was just like, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, like, this was last year. This was in 2023, I've been out for 13 years. And some random Navy SEAL just gave this coin to my brother and told him to give it to me. While we're doing this, guys, I can show you like my different um, my different uniforms. Okay, so this is um, this is a uniform. It has my corporal stripes on it, and it has the tenth cash uh, unit patch on it. So this is definitely, and it has my um, it has my silver my silver um, recruiter badge on it. So it's got corporal stripes, tenth cash. So I must have worn this. This is definitely basic training issue. Um, so 1998, it's got, it's got new name tapes on it. Um, so what I'm thinking is this is one of the uniforms that I wore in between recruiter school, but before I reported to actual recruiting duty. So that says, this is an interesting little artifact, a little, little window in time. So it's gotta be, it's gotta be late 2001 was when I would wore this with all this specific stuff on it. This is another one. This is more recent. This is probably like uh, 2000, um, 2005, I think, because we have the, um, this has the uh, uh, airborne patch that I was telling you about earlier, and you know, underneath the uh, American flag, it has the 226, it has the 226 unit patch on it, and it has my silver badge on there. So this was probably... Germany 2005, right after the first deployment, um, because there was a uniform change in October of 2005 when we switched the ACs. So this is 2005, so I must have been 24 when I wore this. This one here, this is just a DCU version of that. Um, again, you have the uh, airborne combat patch, and you have the uh, 226 unit patch on there. Everything is the same there except... Um, they have the silver badge right there. Everything is the same here except, uh, you know, it's just it's just tan. Wore that in Iraq. This is uh, the last uniform that I wore. See, uh, I wore this to uh, when I was. This is the ACU. Probably wore this in Iraq a bunch. Um, see, I had I had switched over to the gold badge right there. So when I found out that I had actually earned the gold badge years later. See, I've replaced the uh, airborne combat patch with the 226 combat patch because I was actually more proud of this than the other one. And of course, you have the uh, medac, medical activity ICD uh, unit patch on there. And there's still a pen there, black pen in the little thing there. So, yeah. 
That's all I got.